What's up Falcon fans? This is the recap video where we discuss what happened to the Atlanta Falcons. If you guys like this type of content, hit that like button. If you guys hate this type of content, hit that dislike button or we'll hurt your boy's feelings. Well, maybe just a little bit. But also, if you want to do a huge favor for your boy, hit that subscribe button. It will help other empire grow. So on that note, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the Falcons. Let's start out with the good. First off, Young Wei Ku, 4 for 4, the longest was 54, and he was 100% accurate, um, even with the extra points, and Bradley Pinion did his thing, so uh, much love for those guys, and then you know what, Taylor Heineke did the best that he was given when it comes to the play calling, obviously he's not the offensive coordinator, obviously he's not the head coach, so he can't just decide to change the play calls if he doesn't like them, he just has to follow it through like a soldier, and for that aspect, um, he did a pretty good job, now yes, did he overthrow some, yes, but of course at the same time he was getting pressured, and a lot of the coverages that he was was hoping to get weren't really wide open to our wide receivers or tight end but I did like the connection to John o. Smith you know Kadarius Hodge and Kyle Pitts where they all of them got over 50 plus yardage you know John o. Smith got that 60 long touchdown um, guaranteed reception so I'm very happy about that but when it comes to the defense side of the ball I thought they did a good job in creating turnovers I also thought they did an excellent job in getting after the quarterback four times I'm um, sacking him and crazy uh, different types of ways I like Nate Landman I think he's really becoming an incredible inside linebacker um, David Odamata definitely you know was a great pickup when the Saints didn't pick him up so it, it just shows you how how much uh, an enforcer and a punisher he truly is for our interior line and then you know Calais Campbell even though he's old 37 he doesn't act like that so great job to getting us that safety but on that note let's talk about the bad side note here I just rewatched the game and I am currently recording on 1 38 um, a.m. in the morning um, because I just can't go to bed, unfortunately. So let's just talk about a couple of bad things that um, I wrote down here on my notes. Uh, let's talk about uh, Taylor Heineke's drive. Now, like I said about my good, I thought he did some incredible play call. But here's something that is inadequate for Arthur Smith when it comes to third down conversions. It is garbage. It is just terrible. Um, I, I don't know how. And I'm, I'm going to try not to yell and complain because um, out of the, you know, uh, third down conversions, right? Uh, we were, we had 18 and we collected 10 first downs. So, why did the Atlanta Falcons had struggling converting, you know, third down offensive uh, Well, let me, let me just give you a couple examples. Um, in the first drive, you know, um, Heineke, he was on third down and 14. Um, did not convert the, the first down because he threw it away because there was like no open man. And the second drive, you know, um, Heineke on third down, it was seven. Uh, incomplete. He threw it too high to number eight. So in the third drive, um, uh, Heineke threw it, you know, uh, third and three. It was incomplete. Um, he threw it too high to number 12. And so, you know, uh, let's just say in the sixth drive, you know, Heineke was at uh, third and 10. It was incomplete. Um, he overthrew it to number 15. And, you know, we'll just do the seventh drive. And I wrote down her here on my list where Heineke threw it third and 16, incomplete. <sighs> yeah. And then, you know, on another drive, I just, at that point, I got tired of it. Um, Heineke was third and eight, incomplete, and threw it to number 15. But it was just no match because it, they didn't see eye to eye. So why am I saying this? It is hard to get a first down when you are third and 10, third and seven, third and 16, third and eight, and sometimes third and three. It depends on the situation, right? Now, Heineke did some three or five times when he was on third down conversions. He did it pretty good when they were on the 10 um, line yard, right? So, but that means he cannot be consistent enough to constantly give you first down where you're in these predicament long yardage. It just doesn't build for success. And to be a great offensive coordinator, hell, to be even a greater, I don't know if that's a word, head coach, you got to give your guys opportunity to get easy yardage so it'd be easier for them to convert if you ever have the possibility to go third down, right? And there's a lot of times where he doesn't run it. 
So you pass it three times, and this is why Tyler Heineke's constantly throwing, 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 because then you're getting the opponent. You're, you're actually you're telling the opponent we're not gonna run it, so they're automatically gonna know they're gonna um, throw it. So they're gonna do a lot of press. They're gonna do a lot of two um, high safety concepts. They're gonna make sure they're gonna look at the quarterback at all times, not the running back, even though that is our bread and butter. Um, unfortunately, um, you're, we're being inconsistent with running and passing, passing and running. You know, should we run more? Should we pass more on certain situations? That's very, you know, convoluting to the Atlanta Falcons, Arthur Smith brand here, right? So that's one aspect I thought it was very interesting that we have to discuss. I don't think any other Falcons content creators, I could be wrong though, are not even discussing. It's just the third downs and ridiculous um, s- scenarios that we don't even need to be in in the first place if we manage, you know, the time of the play calling right, right? And so now let's talk about uh, another aspect I thought was pretty interesting. Um, the Vikings play action were just killing us. Um, I have it here on, the, on my list um, five times they did incredible play calls when it came to the play action that just kind of destroyed us when we're trying to you know shut them down three and out. It was like very at the end uh, on third down conversions where they were just hitting these high points of wide open coverage, uh, wide receivers, and sometimes the tight ends. So that was pretty much um, a disaster. Now for our defense, usually our defense is pretty good. I've kind of I've kind of noticed this a couple of times where our defense kind of blows a certain coverage where they don't really need to, and that gives the opponents either touchdowns or um, first dr- first down drives that really help them move the chains and then get them touchdowns. Um, Jeff Okuda did this twice, where we never that time where uh, Jeff Okuda thought that the tight end was going to catch the ball. So he decides to look at the tight end and not the running back. <laughs> you know, that the running back got 47 yards in the first quarter. That, you know, I re-looked at the film and, you know, Jeff Kudo didn't even pay attention to the running back at all. And I just don't know why. That was just a busted coverage. Um, you got to stick with your man. And then on the fourth quarter um you know 1.14 seconds left Jeff Okuda did the same thing again where you know Jordan Addison you know you should have been sticking with your guy but you didn't and you gave him a 24 yard uh, reception that really helped them move the chains and eventually you know gave them that touchdown drive or touchdown catch that I don't know why Jeff Okuda was even looking at you know Addison he has been a baller rookie you know ever since week three I think yet again the Atlanta Falcons keep hurting themselves with penalty flags um, we had eight the Minnesota Vikings they only had one and so that really hurts the Atlanta Falcons because two of them where we could have got the first down because we went on a fourth down, four and four, and we gave it to um, CP. You know, he caught the ball, got the first down, but then it was, you know, pu- uh, pulled back because of number 15, you know, holding. And then another a CP run, it was called back. So uh, pre-notion snaps are really hurting us, and that's kind of hilarious in a, in a sense because we should be excellent in pre-notion uh, snaps. That's what Arthur Smith, part of his run attack and, and play action is all about is the pre-notion snaps. But for some reason, it's just been killing us all season. So who knows? It, it's, it, it's a Falcon thing at this point. Also, the Atlanta Falcons had missed nine tackles that were really detrimental to this game. The Minnesota Vikings used that advantage to score points in the third and fourth quarter where we just could not bring down the tight end, uh, the running back, the wide receiver, and especially Joshua Dobbs, who just ran the ball. And this is also another point I made in my preview video. I thought we could contain him in the passing game, and we did. But the thing is, when it comes to running quarterback, we just let them go ape crap on us, right? We just allow them to do whatever they want, go inside or outside. We did it with with every court. If you look at the statistic and go back and look at the stat sheets, we allowed the quarterback to average over 40 plus rushing yards on us. And they are usually the leading rushing of that category group, not the running backs. 
So the Atlanta Falcons have a huge problem in maintaining and trying to figure out how to stop the quarterback from getting out of the pocket and just rushing the ball to make incredible extension drives. Or extension drives, my bad. And let me talk about the Atlanta Falcons turnovers in the third quarter because that definitely was a huge game changer for the Minnesota Vikings on a reason why they won this game. Um, B. John Robinson's um, fumble and then Heineke's interception where they were back-to-back. Well, let's start out with B. John Robinson. Um, he fumbled the ball, unfortunately. It happens to rookies. It happens to all running backs. So I'm not really going to put the blame on him for that. Um, he didn't notice the ball got punched out when he was blindsided. So at that time, the London Falcons still had 21 points um, to uh, Minnesota's uh, 13 points. Okay. And the time was 5.06 when the turnover happened. Second time, uh, we got the ball. Um, we had 21 uh, points, and the Minnesota Vikings at that time had 21 points. So when Heineke threw that interception, by the way, terrible play call. I don't know why Heineke threw it in that terrible coverage where there was nobody wide open, but that's the Arthur Smith problem, I personally uh, think. Um, that was um, 2 minutes and 15 seconds left in the third quarter before the fourth quarter happened where you just gave them an extra um, ammo to score in the fourth and they did they they scored uh 10 um points and compared to uh seven so yeah it, it definitely put us on, on a backtrack of you know trying to scramble for points and then that comes to my um, other problem with the Atlanta falcons they finally decided to run the ball effectively in the fourth quarter where you should have been establishing that in the first second and third now a couple of times we didn't do so hot uh, in the run game in the first second and third but you got to constantly keep grounding and pounding the ball because eventually in the fourth quarter we saw that the vikings defense were getting tired getting flustered would just keep pounding and pussing all over themselves so yeah it's it's an opportunity wasted unfortunately in the run game again with arthur smith I have so many other things we can talk about and discuss um, in full grand one hour detailed documentary about this, but I don't want to bore you guys. So I want to talk about one more thing about Arthur Smith play calling and understanding, you know, <laughs> the timing and the situation that we're dealt with. And that comes in the fourth quarter with um, Tyler Algiers uh, rushing touchdown, right? With all the problems against the Minnesota Vikings, the Atlanta Falcons still could have won this game because we still had the golden goose that lays the golden eggs for us with time clock management and stalling the clock if we did it properly. Because before um, Tyler Algier scored that touchdown that gave us seven uh, points, we had 21, right? And they had 24. Okay, so we take that into consideration and we just move the chain and we did that pretty good until we got first down and we had three minutes left and six seconds on the clock. We gave uh, the ball to uh, Tyler Algier who ran the first down. I would prefer to get five or six yards, you know, and then let the Minnesota Vikings burn a first time out, but they didn't do that. Instead, you know, Tyler Algier ran the first down mark. Okay. Second attempt of running the ball, right? We had two minutes left and 18 seconds before we snapped the ball. Um, Tyler Argier got a couple of, of yardage. And then the Minnesota Vikings used their first timeouts. Okay, now the Minnesota Vikings have two timeouts. Okay, so the third attempt on this drive. Uh, it was second and goal. And we had two minutes and 13 seconds left on the clock. And that's where Tyler Algier scored a touchdown. Now... This is very conflicted uh, because it's hard to get a touchdown because you don't know if you just keep stalling, 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 you may not get a touchdown, and you're probably right. It's a 50-50 chance. Probably for us, we probably want to get it because, you know, Arthur Smith doesn't like, you know, running the ball in the red zone for some reason. But that's beside the point. The whole point is you literally gave the Minnesota Vikings three timeouts because of the, you know, you know the two-minute warning so they have an extra, you know, uh, um, time clock, you know, um, um, stamping, whatever you want to call it right now, because I'm, I'm, I'm blind minded over here. Um, so yeah, you gave them two minutes of a drive where they can just give you or give us incredible play calling where they don't have to force it to go deep. 
You understand how that feels? This has happened to the Atlanta Falcons when you score too early. It's basically like the Detroit Lions, and it's basically like week one last year against the New Orleans Saints, where you gave them enough time for them to articulate and calculate where they need to go on specific turn points on a dime piece where they can throw it perfectly without having to just put pressure on the quarterback. And that's, it's one of those things that Arthur Smith, I don't understand why, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting mad. I don't understand why Arthur Smith just cannot learn that from week one to week eight or week nine at this point in juncture. It is just mind boggling how he cannot lead, how he cannot um, command a field, understand the situation. And I, and I, I think he does. Because, I mean, I'm not a, you know, play caller for the NFL, so who the hell am I to criticize him? But why he ain't acting like he should be acting, right? Uh, it's just one of those things I just don't understand. And I probably will never understand. So, on that note, let's talk about the Falcons. First off, congratulations to the Minnesota Vikings and their organization and their fan base because they clearly wanted to win this game. Um, it's just been plastered all over. We don't need to go over Joshua Dobson's, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they got him last week, you know, in the building. And it just, it just makes the Atlanta Falcons look stupid, you know, embarrassed. Uh, like we're not a a sophisticated organization. And and for Arthur Smith, that's what it it feels like. We're back in the caveman days, you know, those SpongeBob and Patrick caveman days. (laughs) Um... I'm worried about this team. I'm really worried about this team. You know, all this hype, it doesn't mean nothing. It's all a bunch of shenanigans at this point. Um, it, it, This is really telling If uh, for, for next week against the Arizona Cardinals who are 1-8. and eight. And if we can't beat them um, fashionly, um, it, Arthur Smith got to go. Um, I was advocating for him to stay in Atlanta for two more years. If we had a good season um, this year, because I thought and he, he needs to take time. Rome was not built in the day. That was my mantra. But uh, uh, screw me, because clearly I I, I, I I don't understand why Arthur Smith is is pro- deep deep progressing, not aggressing or progressing. I don't know. My, my <laughs> the English language is really butchering me over here. Just trying to figure out why Arthur Smith is so inabitude of of losing. But, you know, it is what it is at this point. So, hopefully there'll be brighter uh, futures for the Atlanta Falcons. But until Arthur Smith is either, um, you know, his play callings is someone else's job or he's just out, um, I don't think the Atlanta Falcons are going to have a great season um, this year, unfortunately. So, (sighs) yeah, depressing. But I still love my Atlanta Falcons to the day I die. Believe that. So on that note, if you guys lasted this long to the very end of the video, thank you so much for taking your own personal time and day to watch these Falcon content videos. I like making videos for you guys. So there here's more on the screen if you guys are interested in it. So what do Falcons do? Rise up. Until the next episode, show love and peace of the world and peace.